Tenby, my family, my mum's family used to go to Tenby in Wales um, since when, when since mum was ten years old, so the 1950s, and um, and we've we've got this little flat in Tenby ever since. Well, not ever since, but um, her and her sisters they they share a flat down there, and uh, it's just wonderful, Tenby. Um, it's, it's gorgeous, but yeah, yeah, and I've also done been to Cardiff, then the the other theatre. Uh, with uh, with another show, um, Crazy View, but yeah, no, Love Whale, and also of course Casualty. What am I talking about? Casualty was in Cardiff. I was there for the best part of a year. I mean, I, did, I didn't get to see a lot of Cardiff, a huge amount, because when you're doing TV, it's um, seven to seven, and then you're learning lines for the next day, and it's quite it's quite intense. So you do, but it's just I think it's just the um, I just love the people, the atmosphere of it all. Uh, the first thing I said to the uh, getting off the train first time in Cardiff to the taxi driver. You know what's the best thing, and he and he said um, coming back. So when you go on holiday and you come back, he said the best bit is coming back because people are just really lovely and friendly and happy, and you know it's good. As a, you, and you notice that when you're doing a tour like this, that different parts of the country, you really do notice it. We open on Tuesday, so we travel on a Tuesday. We'll get there, then we do the performance, and on Wednesday we've got two shows: Thursday two shows, Saturday two shows. So Friday is the day. Friday is the day where. You, you the thing is your adrenal gland is switched on for such a long time that actually you you can't be doing too much. Uh, you got to kind of take it easy. Um, I, I, I made the mistake of um, playing a game of golf on a Friday with some friends, and I was absolutely uh, it was such a stupid thing to do um, because um, yeah, this play is so fast. It's like a Swiss watch. It's like a Swiss clock. Um, it's all incredibly. Um, everything is precision it's all there's nothing left to chance in this play and it's taken ages to get to where we are um because you're kind of when you start a project like this you're you're finding your feet as you go along you have a very small rehearsal time of maybe three or four weeks and there are so many words in this tony my character the old tennis player he's jaded tennis player his wife has obviously fallen in love with someone else and he's gone crazy about it and seeks revenge and goes for is it possible to do the perfect murder? That is the key. Is it possible to come up with the perfect plan for the perfect murder and get away with it? And um, so it's just a brilliant piece of work. I can't believe it was written in the 40s. Um, it should really be called Killing Eve if it was modern day, but obviously it doesn't, can't quite go to that modern interpretation. We've changed the dialogue quite a bit. There's quite a lot of, not, not a huge amount. All we've done is taken out a few words that make it, sound a bit too old like too many i say i say old boy uh because it does have that it can have that flavor but obviously we're we've made it 1960s not 1950s it's obviously famous for the alfred hitchcock film the classic with grace kelly and it was beautiful but we're just thinking of just making it a little bit more raunchy, a little bit more sexy. Um, so Diana Vickers, who's playing wonderful Margot, she she is really brilliant um, in her interpretation, just kind of, just, yeah, she's just got that, I can't quite put it into words, but let's just say a little bit more raunchy and a little, you can show a bit more than an, an ankle, as it were, um, from, from back then. We had a few people last week who were real major fans of the film saying it's their favourite film. And, and yet they actually both said that they enjoyed it just as much, if not more in its own right. I mean, we, there's the trouble with theatre is that you have to kind of think to yourself, OK, do we just re replicate, and reproduce what was done and successful? Sometimes you can ruin something. It's like, leave it alone. If it's like Fred Astaire's choreography or Mozart's music, like, leave it alone. But if it's, if you think, well, OK, open to interpretation, let's just kind of... So, yeah, I mean, it's got kind of a John Lewis kind of feel about the set. I don't want to spoil it for you, but, you know, you'll see it before the play even starts and the music. And um, and it's great. It's just um, playing with that uh, variety. I actually watched uh, Sleuth with um, Olivier and Michael Caine, the original, watch that back because that's all about gameplay, playing the game with someone. And it's all a game and... You know, Tony is the tennis player and it was the game. And then he's jealous that his wife has naturally fallen in love with someone else. And then also I watched um, uh, Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor in um, in what's uh, in uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. And it's just seeing, it's just a reflection of like how much 
grit or dirt you can put into it. And I might just be talking a load of nonsense and you'll think, Tom, you've not done any of that. You know, when things go wrong, if they go wrong, a few weeks ago, they had a couple arguing in the front row because they thought they'd turn the phone off and actually it was something else. And it was the music playing through his, in the jacket pocket, but he was blaming her, she was blaming him. Anyway, I just went up to the front and said, you know, can I help you? This was during the play. Um, so he stopped and, and, anyway, and then just played around saying, oh, I'll have to call you back, blah, blah, blah. Turned out, yes, he pressed the play button on the music. And that's why it was going off. And it was so funny and the audience loved it. And then at the end, we got him up on stage to take a bow with us because it was quite a funny sort of moment. And it's stuff like that that you think, oh, it's just, uh, that's when it's quite special as well. You think theatre is very good soul medicine. You're coming to see a thriller, but it's also immensely funny as well in a and you know and you don't have to be doing belly laughs you know people are you can enjoy because uh, I'm not a very loud person when I go to the theatre I don't I don't necessarily laugh out loud massively but when when the people do get confidence of oh someone's laughing and I'll laugh too if I feel like it then it's been really lovely that the sense of um it's like an orchestra it's like music because we when you get the repeat pattern you know that okay if I say this properly and put the right timing into it it will create a bit of a snigger and a bit of a laugh. And um, yeah, it's really, it's, it's, it is, it's like a, an orchestra. It's like a, you've got your batons and it's, uh, it's great writing. It feels very fresh. It feels like it was written last week. It's probably partly to do with what we've done about just taking out some of the stuff that's not necessary anymore. We don't need the exposition like we used to, you know, because there was a lot of explanatory stuff that's not even in the film compared to the play either. Um, you look at the play versus the film, it's the same dialogue, but a lot of it's been taken out because it's just not needed because you can do it visually. Um, and so it's the same for the play as well. Yes, we've just, um, it's, it's very zippy. It zips along. It's a real workout. You think that musical theatre was the one that really exhausted you because it's singing, dancing, singing, dancing, acting, singing, dancing. But, but this... Once you're plugged in, as soon as it's like you're on, um, every it's a real workout. The dialogue, there's so much talking. Wow! But it's really, but it, it's kind of a, it's up and down. It's kind of backwards and forwards. It's it's really wonderful. I've not enjoyed myself as much as this in a very long time in a job. I was really exhausted after Top Hat and uh, Crazy for You. So actually, it's a refreshing change to be able to put on don the clothes and go and sit on the sofa and talk to an old schoolmate who you're going to trick him and yeah corner him blackmail him uh, into doing his dirty work for him and that, so it's actually uh, as i say it is it is kind of it's you're you're all, you're kind of as tired as doing a musical yes it doesn't have the live music and the singing and dancing but no i'm not missing it at the moment because this is as nourishing it's definitely as nourishing if you get a play and you get a play right with the timing and the the timing, yeah, because it is. I mean, it is like a, if it's done well, it is like a piece of music because you're listening. It's like a radio play. You know, you don't want to have massive chunks of, but you, do you know what I mean? If you get it right, then it's just fluid. It's great. The winners of Strictly Come Dancing 2008 are... Tom! <laughs> We watch it without fail. I absolutely love it. Um, the children love it. Obviously, didn't have children back then. And now it's like, what? You know, you were, you did. I mean, we don't really talk about it. We don't really go on to it. But we watch it without fail. Really enjoy it. I used to ha I used to get a panic attack listening to the music. That was after the first three years, up to three years. And now I actually can watch it. And I don't remember any of it, to be honest, because you're in fight or flight mode um, in that 90 seconds. I remember the rehearsals, the training. And I remember the show dance, I remember a bit of the quick step, the leap up, the leap off the stage. But um, your brain goes into the uh, fight or flight and I don't actually remember the routines. I have to watch them back myself online to see them. And so the kids really, they just love it like all young uh, people do, young or old. That's the beauty of it is, is it just crosses the whole, the whole um, all, all decades. Uh, so I haven't been able to watch it because it's Saturdays. So I've got it on catch up and we've watched some of the results. Um, but yeah, I just, I think it's wonderful. It's thanks to Strictly that I'm actually talking to you now because there was no way I was going to get into some really good parts necessarily in theatre without it. I, the staying power has been brilliant. And maybe that's because it's music and dancing and, you know, they keep 
adding things we'd never got props in our day and i really wanted props and then and we didn't have the charleston in our day and then luckily i got invited to go back and do the christmas special with ot so i got to do a charleston and that was just amazing i mean it's oh it's just all joy when there's a world full of all sorts of rubbish um it's nice to have something where it's a bit like father brown because I was, I was doing father brown and that is obviously murder, uh, a mystery murder, G.K. Ch Chesterton stories. But it, it, it's very tame. It's very lovely. And, and actually, there is a market for that where it's not all really hard, gritty blood and guts and nastiness and backstab. I mean, Father Brown is uh, it's just quite a charming sort of, <laughs> sort of fairly relaxed, uh, hazy day kind of murder type thing. Um, so it's probably the same with this. It's not going to. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, We've, we've given it hopefully a dose, but we've not taken it too far. 